Roger, what we just want to know from you, you've been in this groundwater sector for uh, a lot of years, and um, we would like to just ask you, what, what's your um, highest achievements or your highlights in your career? Forest. Thank, so thank you very much. Um, I, I just be, before before we start, I want you to behave like um, rugby players when they get interviewed on TV. They never they never ask answer the question they were asked, and they sort of go off at their own tangent. But if, first of all, I'd like to to congratulate um, uh, France and Alanda on their um, their nomination and being awarded the. Uh, the groundwater medal. I think it's um, uh, fitting that both of them, them get that. So congrats to them. Uh, a, a special word of thanks to to you and the and the the groundwater division for bestowing this honour on me. Um, when I got home, I, I like you. I believe you're sitting in in the middle of the the mini fields. Um, when uh, at the closing ceremony of the groundwater conference, I was sitting in the SWAT log uh, on my way to a drilling rig that I had to go and um, and and deal with at that time. So it was a it was a very unusual place to 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 get this honor. Um, and uh, you know, just just thinking about all the people that that have been given this honor previously, just um, made me sit down very quietly and think about how. How humbling it is that um, uh, that I've been put in in this bracket, and as, it's really exciting to see that we've got two of them joining us on the AGM here, uh, Everard Brown and and Gideon Trudeau, both of whom were at one stage uh, my bosses. Um, so a, a greeting to the two of them. Um, it's also it'll also be. Uh, wrong of me not to acknowledge the role that my family has played in, in where I sit today. Um, uh, my wife, Jenny, and my two daughters, Michelle and Sam, have always accommodated me in the way that I work and the, the way that I do things. Um, I would sometimes come home and say, um, hi, babe, I'm, I'm off to work for, for a week or two weeks. I'm going here, I'm going there. And there was, there was never any complaint. They always made sure that um, our family dynamic was able to cope with that. So um, a, a special thank you to, to them. So how does, one, how does one go about describing a, a career that's almost spanned 40 years and, and picking out the, the highlights when I have had so many highlights? Um, I'm, I'm very chuffed with the, the way my career has gone and what I've been able to achieve. And that, is, that has always been due to uh, the people that I've worked with. Uh, I've worked with some extraordinary people that have, have played a massive role in how I've turned out, I believe, uh, right from the beginning, uh, where Mark von Dulacher, who was a, a Belgian guy, taught me to write English. Uh, he put a huge amount of time and effort into, into making sure that I could communicate properly in a written way. And... I, I feel that's always held me in very good stead. Um, I always loved working with Gideon to do because he, in addition to just being a, a true gentleman, he was a fantastic scientist. Uh, and he would always push and make you think properly and, and make sure that you, you were on the right path. Mm. Uh, after I left the CSR in, in 1996 to start Parsons and Associates, I've had an extraordinary time engaging with a whole lot of people, with colleagues, with friends. And the work that I've done has allowed me to engage with some really, really good people, both within the, the groundwater community and, um, and outside of it, where I've been able to, to learn things, um, where I've been able to develop as a person. And I, I think I've, I've had some extraordinary opportunities, you know, developing uh, WASP, uh, together with my good friend Jeff Jolly and being supported by the Water Research Commission, being involved in developing the tools around the reserve, um, doing uh, SUA work for Coca-Cola, which is something that I, I, I really enjoyed and that allowed me to travel a little bit, which is a, a, one, of my, one of my two passions. And then more recently, the, the drought work that I've been doing in uh, the Southern Cape and in the Western Cape. Uh, and these latter two were, were particularly nice because 
often we we spend a lot of time writing reports and investigating things and writing up on them and and not much happens or not come not much comes out of that um but with this drought work it was really get down and do it you know there was not a lot of discussion about uh costs there was not a lot of discussion about how you were allowed to work and where you were allowed to work the, the pressure was on and and we had to get water and i i really enjoyed that and i i learned to i learned a tremendous amount but no, that's, that's to come back to come back more to your to, to answer your question directly there were a couple of things that really struck me in our in our conference that we held uh, recently the, the first one that i was um taken with was uh, the the talk given by colin rice now i've um, i've known of colin rice i don't think i've ever met him but i've known of him since the early 1990s when i was involved in um, the groundwater division and he was involved with the Boer water association and i thought that his his presentation that he gave was absolutely outstanding and it's something that as a, uh, a consultant i've had to work with all the time and and many of my consulting colleagues have the same thing is how do we behave and act as this link between our clients between ourselves and between our contractors to make sure that we do a good job and everyone gets a fair deal and that we can we can walk away at the end of a job um, uh, still being friends making sure that we we've all been able to to earn a decent and a fair living uh, and mm. it's something i think the groundwater division should should take up um in terms of presenting some short courses even if they one day courses around this relationship this, this legal and this contractual relationship between um the different parties i in uh, uh, some of my low lights have been around these contractual issues and one of them was uh, when i lost about 800,000 rand 15 years ago and 800,000 rand 15 years ago was some serious money because a contractor left a pump down the hole and uh, we got involved in a, in a legal skirmish. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot for us to learn there to, to make sure we don't get ourselves into trouble. If I had that 800,000 rand in my pocket today, I think I'd be able to retire quite comfortably at my, in my current state. So, um, I really implore the Groundwood Division to think about having a course, one or two courses around the country on this contractual relationship. Mm. The, 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 the second thing that, um, that struck me during our conference was, uh, was Matthijs Dippenau's call for, uh, for us to embrace our society. And when, when I look back at what has happened in, in, in my career, the groundwater division has always been central to that. Uh, it's always been the, the focus of, of my professional home where I could go and I could, I could learn and I could engage with some really good people. Um, I could share my ideas. Uh, I could have them uh, uh, checked uh, through my presentations and, and this kind of thing. And a little while ago, Landa sent me my um, acceptance letter into the groundwater division. Um, and I have, it, I have it here. It was dated on the 13th of March, 1986. That's a very, very long time ago. I've been a member for, for 35 years, unbroken. But I want to read the sentence um, that uh, Bill Orpen wrote. And he was the guy that issued it. He was the chairman of the... Um, the membership subcommittee, and he wrote on it, he said, it is hoped that your association with the division will be long and fruitful, and that you will actively support its endeavors. And when I was reading that, I thought, yeah, Roger, you know, you've, you've actually done that. You've had a, a fantastic association with the groundwater division. You've participated, you've been a, a, a branch chairman, you've organized conferences, uh, you haven't missed presenting a, a paper at a conference in, in 31 years. Um, and it, it was actually quite nice to, to read that and say, hey, I wonder what Bill Open is thinking right now when, uh, when he hears what's going on. Mm -hmm. But it, 
it reminds me that, you know, and I see it's on the agenda, this concept of having the young professionals. And at the, at the um, danger of sounding like an old fart, I have to wonder what these young professionals are. So, so back in the day, when we were organizing conferences, those young professionals in the early 80s were people like uh, Tony Reinders and Richard Bush and, um, and, and Andrew Johnson. They were, they were probably still in their, in their upper 20s, maybe just gone into their 30s. And these were the guys that were organizing the conferences. They were the mana, the main mana. And I, I can't get out of my mind the vision of Richard Bush. And I'm not sure how many of, um, of the people that are, are in this AGM will remember Richard Bush. But Richard was a, he was quite an interesting guy. He studied at Rhodes. He got a master's. Um, he got into a little bit of personal trouble that he had to deal with. And he, he worked with, um, with the Department of Water Affairs. Uh, because of his, his circumstances, he took probably the toughest assignment working around beauty and swart water and he had a young young wife and a young baby that and they lived in a caravan um but here was this guy that just rolled up his sleeves he got involved and they organized conferences so there was no special grouping of young professionals these are the guys that that got in and, and did it and they were supported by by slightly older guys like bull Orkin and and, and Ronnie mayer and so on but the heartbeat of the groundwater division was the young guys. And over, over the years, they, they would organize the conferences up till 1995 when they, they hit a wall and um, the energy to organize these conferences sort of just dissipated, uh, they'd had enough. This was before we had conference organizers. So the, the committee did everything. They organized the venues, they organized the meals, they organized the parties, they organized the conference proceedings. They did everything. And after the 1995 conference, um, things, things went backwards and we didn't have a conference for, for 10 years. And, and who were the guys that resurrected the Groundwater Division Conference? It was the young guys. Mm. This time it was a, it was a, it was a trio of, of, um, of scallywags out of the University of the Western Cape. And you will all know them very well. Uh, uh, Dr. Kevin Peterson, Dr. Rian Titus, and uh, Dr. Shafik Adams. Yes. And the, these guys were in their 30s when they said, oh, you know, let's come, let's fix this. Let's, let's have these groundwater conferences. And we've still been having these, these conferences. And it's because of the legacy of those guys putting in the hard effort to make sure that we could have our conferences, that we have the ability to come together, we get to know each other a little bit better as a community, uh, we can share knowledge, we can exchange ideas uh, and, and build a better and stronger profession. Um, so what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say in my normal long-winded way is that we need people to get involved. We need people to take ownership. Um, and you don't have to be an old bully to do it. You can be a young buck. Uh, all you have to do is, is have the, the energy and the enthusiasm to volunteer your time to, to make your contribution. And you don't have to stay on forever. You can stay on for a year or two and then say, okay, I've done my bit and, and move on. Um, so it's, it's time we started looking to, to the younger generation to throw in the next um, wave of energy and enthusiasm to, to keep our society strong, to make sure that we continue to strive to reach the objective of promoting the, the science and technology of groundwater. I think that's where I'm going to end it now. And I, again, I'd like to thank you for, for this, uh, this recognition. It means the world to me. And um, I, I sincerely hope that in 30 years' time, you're still not having to listen to me talk about the, the things that make me excited. Farnas, thank you very much.